Hello, it's Saturday the 23rd of July. You're tuned in to our 6pm newscast coming to you from Addy Downing's News Centre in Seoul. It's very good to have you with us. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story this evening. Authorities in Germany are trying to establish the motives of a teenage Iranian immigrant who shot dead at least nine people at a shopping centre in Munich. German Chancellor Angela Merkel will chair a meeting of her top security aides in the coming hours. EG1 starts us off. Another terror attack has shaken Germany, this time a shooting rampage by a man at a shopping district in Munich, killing at least nine and injuring 21. At just before 6 p.m. local time on Friday, 18-year-old Iranian immigrant Ali Sonboli opened fire in front of a McDonald's restaurant near a busy shopping mall. Sixteen people are still in hospital, including several children and three who are in critical condition. About two and a half hours after the first gunshots rang out, the attacker was found dead near the mall with a self-inflicted gunshot wound to his head. Witnesses say the gunman shouted obscenities against foreigners and Allahu Akbar, which means God is great in Arabic. Despite that, German authorities say his motives are unclear. In a news conference on Saturday, officials said the shooter staged the attack alone. They say it's too early to label it a terrorist attack, adding they have no immediate evidence the attacker was a radical jihadist. The shooting rampage came just four days after an Afghan refugee who swore allegiance to ISIS injured more than 20 people in an axe attack on a train in southern Germany. Lee Ji-won, Arirang News. Now, South Korea's top diplomat leaves for Laos tonight to join a series of regional ASEAN meetings. Diplomatic sources say Yoon byung se will arrive in Vientiane on Sunday and start his meetings with ASEAN counterparts early next week. North Korea's missile and nuclear provocations and South China Sea tensions are expected to dominate the discussions at the ASEAN Regional Forum, which is set for Tuesday. Minister Yoon is scheduled to hold talks with his counterparts from China, Japan, and the U.S. during his time in Laos. Speaking to reporters, Minister Yoon says he has no plans to hold talks with his North Korean counterpart. North Korea is reportedly building a fortified structure on its eastern coast that appears to be two covered docks that could house bigger and better ballistic missile submarines. British-based IHS Jane's Defence Weekly says the base located a couple of kilometres south of the port city of Shinpo could be the biggest active military building project in the whole of North Korea. It says commercial satellite imagery, which you're looking at there, shows the construction could have started as long ago as 2009. Shinpo port is where North Korea keeps its 2,000-ton submarine. The regime has testified numerous submarine-launched ballistic missiles from this submarine over the past several months. Hillary Clinton has named the Virginia Senator Tim Kaine as her running mate for the U.S. presidential election in November. Political pundits say he's seen as a safe pair of hands who could appeal to independents and moderate Republicans. Clinton plans to make a formal announcement in Miami on Saturday. Clinton's Republican opponent, Donald Trump, has called Kaine, quote, the ultimate insider. In a text message to his supporters, Trump's campaign has already dubbed him corrupt cane. So now South Korea's finance chief is attending the G20 finance ministers and central bank governors meeting which kicked off on this Saturday in the southwestern Chinese city of Chengdu. The meeting is one of the key ministerial level sessions before the G20 summit that will be held in China in September and as it's the first time G20 policymakers have gathered since Britain's decision to leave the European Union, discussions have been focused on boosting international financial systems and policies. Seoul's finance minister, Yi Will Ho, is expected to hold bilateral talks with his Chinese counterpart and others during the two-day meeting. Now, a pretty uh, nice and heartwarming story now. A South Korean weightlifter is going to get an Olympic medal some eight years after competing at the 2008 Games in Beijing. Im Jong-hwa will get a bronze medal after the International Olympic Committee uh, disqualified the silver medal winning Turkish weightlifter for doping with an anabolic steroid. 
Shibel Ozkan, who placed second in the women's 48 kilogram class in Beijing, tested positive in recent retests of her urine sample, meaning that the South Korean weightlifter will now get the bronze. And the original bronze medalist, Chen Weiling of Taiwan, is set to be upgraded to silver. Now, new technology to survey the seas around Korea has been unveiled by the Korean government. It's an unmanned robot called Wave Glider that uh, will help save manpower, but has an economical and environmentally friendly perk to it as well. Our Hwang Ho-joon reports from Busan. Monitoring and studying Korea's surrounding seas off its three coastlines 24-7 is near to impossible. But on Friday, the government introduced the Wave Glider, a robot made specifically to survey the seas around Korea as part of an initiative by the Ministry of Oceans and Fisheries to start using robots for such tasks. The Wave Glider is the world's first hybrid wave and solar-powered unmanned ocean robot. But unlike conventional unmanned vehicles or drones, the Wave Glider runs solely on renewable energy. The solar panels provide electricity for sensors and communication systems, and the blade-like rudders convert waves into energy, creating a forward thrust to propel the robot. In other words, as long as it isn't impeded by humans or marine animals, the wave glider can collect and record data over a long duration of time without extra fuel supply and in varying sea states, as it literally glides along the surface of the ocean. Its maintenance cost and the efficiency are the biggest merits of the wave glider. You don't have to worry about fuel costs, and because it's unmanned, you don't have to worry about labor costs. Korea's maritime ministry will use the wave glider along with traditional oceanographic survey devices, such as aerial drones and a research ship, to collect a bathymetric survey near Ulungdo Island in the East Sea next month. But because of its versatility, the wave glider can address a broader array of applications other than just topographic surveys, ranging from tsunami detections, seismic readings, monitoring marine life, and national defense. The wave glider is currently collecting data of the submarine topography in real time just off the coast of Busan, just like it'll do off Ulungdo Island next month. With the help of this robot vessel, experts expect a new era of Korean maritime power, monitoring, protecting, and raising awareness of what lies beneath Korea's waters. Hwang Ho-jun, Arirang News, Busan. Now, Korea's so-called kidult market is showing no signs of slowing down. It's growing very rapidly. Young at heart consumers are collecting childhood toys participating in auctions and even creating their own toy figures. For more details, Kim Mogyeon reports. Kidult is a relatively new term which describes those who are young at heart and comes from combining the words kid and adult. It refers to adults who buy and collect children's toys. At a recent art toy auction hosted by Seoul Auction, a total of 16 toy figures were sold to new owners. A figure from the popular Star Wars movie sold at the highest bid of 1,340 U.S. dollars. A Marilyn Monroe figure had the most bids and was eventually sold at $1,080. Before, people who collect toy figures were viewed with a stereotype that they are pathetic and immature. But now, with the improved quality, this hobby is seen as collectible artworks rather than children's toys. Later this month, another kidult fair will be held, with more than 100 people expected to take part. This time, participants will not only buy toys, but will also have the chance to create figures based on their own life story. Korea's kidult market has been growing in recent years and is currently valued at around $600 million annually. Experts forecast that it will continue to grow in the coming years. Kim mo Arirang News. Now, finally, as we like to do at this time on a Saturday evening, we are going to take a look at the weather here in Korea. And we may have some showers in store tonight across uh, some parts of the central region. It's going to be a very warm and sticky night, unfortunately. The low is only going to dip to 24 degrees Celsius overnight. Sunday will be sunny and hot nationwide with daytime highs in the low to mid 30s. With that, let's take a look at the weather around the world.
Well, that's all we have for now. Do enjoy the rest of your Saturday, wherever you're watching us, and stay tuned to Adi Lang TV. We'll be back with our next newscast at 10pm Korea time. So until then, goodbye.